my problem with the whole psychic thing and the tarot cards is, is that my experience with these psychic type people is that is that most of them are, are at least in my experience they're full of shit and they're hustlers some of them are absolutely and, and they and and whenever i hear that kind of stuff i kind of start i kind of it just in, inclines me to dismiss whatever is going on around it because i they're for the most part you know you'll get probing questions or they'll sort of guess about things mm -hmm. based on your appearance or your life or whatever. And they'll keep going that going down that way by sending probing questions. Don't you get, <clears throat> I mean, don't you ever get the sense that some of these people that are reaching out to you, they just, that they're familiar with your research. They're familiar with your story. So they know if they come up with something that's similar to what your, to what your mm -hmm. expertise is and what you've been studying for 15 years, that, you know, it's kind of like the same thing. They're just kind of trying to mirror your story or trying to come up with, there's mm -hmm. no, there's mm -hmm. no real hard proof of any of this stuff. It's just hearsay, right? Well, there's multiple witness cases, right? So two people see something at the same time. Both people mm -hmm. have to be lying in that, in those situations. Right. But when it comes to psychic abilities, you can't really. Sure. You can test those. Oh yeah. You can prove those. You can test those. How could you prove that? You can just do it in a laboratory experiment. Talk to Dean Radin. There's a uh, researcher out of California, Dean Radin. He's written a bunch of books. He he worked for um, Bell Labs, I think, and he worked on some of the uh, SRI, which is uh, the remote viewing that the government did. I think he mm. was slightly involved with that. Yeah, so th it can be you can study that. It's not 100. percent It's difficult to study, but you can you can there's a um, there's a you can get results through scientific measures it's it's totally ignored within the sciences except the people that are doing this are coming up with consistent results yeah what did he find out about sri uh i can't remember what that's the acronym is uh I, he was involved with um there's a, a he's involved with an organization called ions which is institute for noetic sciences which is was was broke away i think from sri mm -hmm. and that was stud that was started by uh the astronaut edgar mitchell who was one of the fellows who walked on the moon mm. and when he came back from from the moon he his job was to like land the craft on the moon right and so after he's after he did that and like they're flying home his job is done so he didn't have to do anything so all that he could do is just look out the window you know you're like looking out the window for a week and this you're out in space and he said he had like what amounted to a mystical experience he's a, he's a um he's a physicist from mit and he had this magical, mystical, blissful experience, like looking out into the heavens, which makes sense, right? Right, yeah, of course, so. you're riding through outer space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he has. A, so and he he came back and he said, like, you know, he talked to some people and said, look this up. I had this mystical experience. He tried to describe it, and these people came back and said, it's called a, the the closest thing we can find is a, called a samadhi experience, which is a feeling of oneness with the magic of all. I'm mm. paraphrasing that poorly. Right. And he said, oh, okay, well, that's that's what 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 um. That's what I had, so that's what I'll call it. And so he started this organization that studies that, and Dean Radin is involved in that organization. Hmm. So, w in your, I, I'm not a scientist, so I'm right. not. I'm all. I'm. I'm a journalist more than a scientist, right? right? So I'm not trying to prove or disprove anything. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, 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 collect enough stories, to to back up my, the hypothesis that was in a way thrust into my lap. Out of all these stories, these these owl stories and these UFO stories. How, how many of them have like video or photo or photos of these things happening? Like photos of, of a craft or a light or a being or a giant owl. So you, you mentioned like four foot tall owls. Okay. I got no pictures of four foot tall owls. Okay. So, so the, so I got a lot of pictures of owls. People s get, send me pictures of owls all the time. Right, so the close-up owl, like people will say, I've had UFO contact. An owl landed on my back porch. Here's the picture. It's an owl. It looks like an owl on the mm. back porch. The story is what more important is what more important to me. People will say, like, I was called to get my camera and go outside and take a picture in the dark of the roof, and they do, and there's an owl in the picture. So, you know, I, I'm cataloging those kinds of stories, and I'm trying not to weight them too much, right? Because some of them are pretty like loose you know and right. but at the same time you see, you see a pattern you see that same story emerging now your question was um like I, I, uh, so i don't have any you know what i do have i have a i have an audio there's a woman her name is um lindy tucker and she saw a flying craft a flying saucer in her yard in canada um orton ontario and this would have been the 1970s and she had a 
audio recording. She recorded the audio of this craft, and the craft made this beeping noise. The craft doesn't sound like anything. It sounds like beep, 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 beep. Not that interesting, right? But along with that noise, there's a hooting of an owl in the background. So hmm. like there's, that's like, for me, that was like gold for a little, like, oh my God, there's an owl and a UFO. Now, what has since happened is she has collected other people who have recorded UFOs. And they, they make this beep, 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 beep noise. Now, that was, there was a point in the 70s when that noise was kind of being reported. That has tapered off. Not many people are reporting that steady beeping noise anymore. But she collected, I can't remember what it was, <clears throat> multiple audio recordings of flying saucers. And they all made this completely, it sounds like a truck backing up. It's not that interesting. But given the, 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 the witness testimony, taking that into account, if it's to be believed, and nobody is. I mean, yes, there's certainly people out there hoaxing. There's certainly people out there stretching the truth. But um, I'm looking for the pattern in the, in the overall stories. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like, it's hard. It's hard to create a pattern when everyone's aware of all of the information that you're getting because you're publishing it all. Right. So, so all not the, all of it, but yeah, not but, all, of it, but a lot of it. Right. So, yeah. so the people that are sending you these stories, they're, they're able to go and read through all your blog posts about hundred. I mean, how many stories have you published on your blog post about owls and UFOs? Many hundreds. Yeah. So, so they, they're, they, they have access to these. So it's, it's kind of like, but it's like, yeah, I don't, I, I, I see where you're going with this, but my sense strongly is that people are contacting me for another reason. They're contacting me. So like you have a conversation with someone, they're like, I need to talk to you. Like I had this experience. Like I'm therap I'm playing the role of a therapist. I'm not a therapist, but I'm playing the role of it because these people are freaked out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're they're not looking for any fame. They're not looking for any money. They want to be, they want to have a pseudonym if they're ever, if I document this stuff in a book. Um, these people are not at peace. This is they are freaked out by their experiences. They're asking me for help. They're saying like, "Have you ever heard of anything like this happening?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's actually what you've described is very common." Hmm. So so. I'm, I'm not looking for proof in a way. I'm, I'm hoping to offer some solace to the people who are having these experiences. Now you talk to, you talk about a psychic who you talked to. Her name was Anya Briggs. Yes. Can you explain who Anya Briggs is and explain what your experience was with her? Which, which, which experience you, you talking about? There's something about gray aliens she saw, or she saw aliens dancing around you or something like that. In in your book, you talked about you talked about. She said she could see aliens around you when she was looking at you. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So she's psychic. This is something. <clears throat> now, like, I don't take this as concrete proof that there's aliens. She said there. I don't think she did. She say dancing. She may have. She, I don't know if it was dancing, but she said yeah. she saw them around you. Okay, yeah. So she. This has happened to me more than once, where I've talked to people who. So in these waters, like I end up bumping into. I, I did one radio interview and the guy, I said, well, you know, you talk to a shaman and they'll tell you stories about owls. And they're like, who, shaman? Who talks to a shaman? I'm like, you write a book about owls. You, shamans come and find you. You'll start mm -hmm. talking to shamans. So so I'm like, because of the book and because of the researcher, I'm, I'm interacting, I'm talking with people who are psychic, who claim to be psychic. And one of the things that I've had more than one person say, they kind of look at me and they've actually, I've had one person kind of look over my shoulder and kind of go like, there's, 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 I say, like, alien energy around you, gray alien energy. Now, I, I don't see it. I don't sense it. But that's the kind of feedback I'm getting. I don't weight that too, too much. But I do, I am curious of the patterns. Well, and uh, I'm interested, why is it always gray alien energy? It's not. It's not. There's, what is a gray, like, what is the difference between, a, like, are there any other color aliens? Or are they all gray? No. So if you look, so this is, this is coming from a wealth of research. Okay. So about... And I'm making these numbers up, but let's say of the pool of data, you got 100 UFO reports mm -hmm. where people interact with the beings. 50% or so will be gray aliens. The gray, typical gray aliens that showed up on the X-Files that come out of the mothership at the end of... of skinny uh, humanoids with giant skinny heads. Skinny humanoids, big heads, bald heads, big black eyes, big penetrating black eyes, um, spindly long fingers, about three and a half to four feet tall. Hmm. After that, people will report um, uh, humans, total humans, except tall and somewhat, oftentimes they're 
reported as being like seven foot tall and beautiful, like superheroes, basically. And um, reptilians, like giant reptiles, which is not uncommon in the research. I'm only saying what I'm what's reported, so I haven't seen any of these things. And then uh, giant praying mantises. And then there's a bunch of other things like robots or or light beings or balls of light and things like that. So yeah, it's the 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 data that's out there, and it's it's there's a lot of it. There's a wealth of data. Like people, serious researchers are collecting this data. And the problem is like how do you? Someone says you know I saw a giant praying mantis. How do you? How do you? Like, I mean, just, I mean, yes, it's an, it's an incredible story. It's a story beyond belief. But you hear that story a hundred times and, and you have to take it seriously. Mm-hmm.